In the last session, we have understood what are the different versions of ASP.NET and how ASP.NET has been shaped up to the current state. Now, in this session, we shall understand how to develop ASP.NET web forms. And please remember that this session is very important for the beginners who wanted to understand how ASP.NET works. So, let us get started. ASP.NET web forms can be developed using two techniques. One is in-page technique and the second one is code file technique. Now, let us start with in-page technique. Whenever the presentation logic that is design and the business logic that is code are present within the same web form, then it is said to be an in-page technique. Remember that the extension for an ASP.NET web form will be .aspx. In this web form, whenever we try to design the user interface, for example, username, password and a login button as the presentation logic, and whenever the user clicks on the button, whatever the action it has to take place, if we write that code also within the ASP.NET web form itself, like for example, button logic underscore click and whatever the statements to validate the user credentials. So remember, whenever we have both the design and code within the single dot AXPX page, then it is said to be an in-page technique waveforms. Now, let us understand the advantages and the limitations of this model. First, let's start with the advantages. Deployment will be very easy and just X copy is required to deploy the site. And if any errors are in any web forms, then that error will not be reflected at the other web forms while processing the request. If any modifications are performed on any web forms, then only that web form should be copied to the server and hence maintenance will also be very easy. Now, let us try to understand some of the limitations of in-page technique. Since the entire code will exist within the web forms, the complete code has to be provided to the client. Many organizations will not be interested in doing that as they may be expecting the maintenance of the website or application from the client. If the entire code is provided, then the maintenance for the application might be given to other vendors and also some clients may charge additional amount to provide the complete source code also. But here we need to provide the complete code. Since the code is present within the web form, the code has to be compiled every time it has been requested and hence performance will be comparatively slow. Just remember that a small variation might be there. The second approach we have is code file technique. And in the earlier versions, we used to call it as code behind page technique. So what does this technique means? Whenever the business logic is separated into different files other than the presentation logic file, then it is said to be code file technique. For example, let us say within the .axpx file, we create the user interface like username, password, login button and some text box to accept the input from the user. And within the .axpx.cs file, if we write the business logic or code such as button login and the statements to validate the user credentials. We have already discussed that ASP.NET is a specification which has to be implemented with the support of some languages like VB.NET or c -sharp. And since we are implementing with the c -sharp, the code file will be having the extension as .axpx.cs file. And if the implementation has been done using VB.NET, then the code file extension will be .axpx.vb. Now, if you observe the .axpx file, it maintains the presentation logic and the .axpx.cs file maintains the business logic. Remember that 
in later sessions we shall learn how to separate the business logic from the code file to another library as of now just remember these points okay now dot axpx dot cs file is popularly called as the code file and the dot axpx file inherits the dot axpx dot cs class file now let us understand the advantages of the code file technology the code present within the code file will be compiled to the class library that is dot dll files and will be deployed to the server along with the dot axpx file and hence the business logic will be totally abstracted from the clients the next advantage we get is since the business logic is compiled into a library file the performance will be very fast the code present within the code file can be reused in other web forms present within the website and what is the limitations we have in this model means before we understand the limitations let me explain one more important point let us come back to the limitations later now whenever we are creating a web application with 100 asp.net pages using the code file technique then we will be having 100 .axpx files and since each file will be associated with the code file that is .axpx .cs files we will be having 100 .axpx .cs files but once the web application is compiled then the most important point we need to remember here is that we will not be getting 100 dll files so for 100 files we may get 3 or 4 dll files for example like app1.dll for some code files and app4.dll for some other set of code files and one more important point we need to remember is that the name of the compiled class library files will not be having a simple name like app1.dll or app2.dll it is just for understanding i have given a simple names now let us understand the limitations since the business logic is compiled into the class library that is dot dll if any error is raised in one web form then other web forms may not work properly and the next limitation we will have is if any modifications are performed in one web form then the entire website has to be rebuilt and the new class library files has to be republished to the server along with the dot axpx files remember that this is not like our in page technique where if one page is having the problem rectify that problem and reupload the same page again here it is different and this won't be a big problem because we usually don't upload individual pages once we complete one complete module we will have a testing team to test each and everything and then only we shall upload to the server so this case happens exceptionally and remember that code file technique will be the default technique used by the asp.net if you don't mention anything the next important point we need to understand is the programming models remember that asp.net supports two types of programming models first one is callback method and the second one is cross page submission method now let us understand the callback method and remember that this is the default programming model used by our asp.net if used as the programming model then the data will always be submitted back to the same page let us say we have a login page where this login page may be designed using an in page technique or a code file technique we are not worried of in which method this page is designed now if this page is used as a callback method then whenever the user clicks on the login button to submit the data then the data will always be submitted back to the same page and whenever we are using this model we need to remember some attributes the first attribute we need to remember is for example auto postback so what is auto postback means 
submitting or posting the data automatically back to the same page. Now, if you remember or recollect, I have informed that whenever we use the callback method, then the data will be posted back to the same page, right? Now, it means that whenever the client sends a request for this login page for the first time, the request will be given to the login.axpx page, right? Wait, for the first time, we need to display the user interface for accepting the username and password. Now, once the user has accepted the user details, whenever the user clicks on the login button, where does the request goes means to the same page that is login.axpx page, right? But this time our requirement is going to be different. We need to collect the data of the username and the password which has been submitted and we need to perform some validations to validate if the provided data belongs to a valid user credentials or not. Right. So how do we identify if the page is requested for the first time or if the data has been submitted? So for that, we need to remember page dot is postback. So what does this page dot is postback means? It is a property of a page class which is used to identify the request type. That is, if the page is requested for the first time, then this property will return false. And if the data has been submitted, then this property will return true. Next, we need to understand how to collect the data. In order to collect the data, we need to use control name dot property name. The next model we need to understand is cross page submission method. If used as the programming model, then the data present in one web form will be posted or submitted to the other web form. Now, to understand this model, let me copy the previous design and let me paste that. We know that whenever the user use the callback method, then the data will be posted back to the same page, right? Now, our requirement is whenever we submit the data, we don't want the data to be submitted back to the same page. Instead, let us say we have a page called as validate.axpx. So whenever the user clicks on login button to submit the data, then instead of the same login page, we wanted to submit the data to the validate.axpx page where we would like to collect the data and then to do some authentication after that. If the user credentials are valid, then I would like to navigate to success.axpx page. And if the user credentials are invalid, then we would like to navigate to error.axpx page. Now, if you observe this, we can understand that whenever we wanted to submit the data to another page, we can take the support of cross page submission method. And whenever we are submitting the data, then we have two methods for submission. One is get method and the other one is post method. And if you don't mention anything, by default, the data will be submitted using post method in ASP.NET. Now, let us understand some important points to remember about cross page submission method. The first thing we need to remember is postback URL. So what is this postback URL means? It is a property which is used to specify the URL where the data has to be submitted. And once the data has been submitted, we need to collect the data, right? So to collect the data, if get method is used to submit the data, we need to use request.querystring of name. And if post method is used to submit the data, then we need to use request.form of name. And in case if you are not sure which method is used to submit the data, that is get or post, then we can use request of name. 
So these are some of the important points we need to remember before we start developing our ASP.NET web applications. In the next session, let us start with developing our first ASP.NET web application. See you in the next session.